Hey everyone, in this video I wanted to discuss the idea of call loops and how modifying them can help you come up with new ideas. I also wanted to give you a pipeline for development that you may find, uh, may find useful. Let me give you a quick example so we're on the same page with this. This is a very simplified look at soccer. At the top here we have start, move, kickball and score. This is a pretty simple loop of how an individual player can score in the game of soccer, and it's pretty easy to identify that this game is soccer after looking at this loop. Let's look at this other loop. First we spawn, drive the car, hit the ball with the car, and then score. This is a loop for a player in the game scoring a goal. Can you tell me what game this is? If you guessed Rocket League, then you're correct. In this example we can see that by swapping out what you move with and score goals with, you can drastically change how the game plays. Let's look at another example. For this loop, we're going to have explore, click on creature, kill creature, and get loot. This is a very familiar loop for players of the action role-playing game genre. For the sake of this video, we're going to use this as a very simple Diablo loop for melee combat. In this second example, we have explore, shoot enemy, kill enemy, get loot. This is more tricky than the Rocket League example, but I have a very specific video game in mind. I'll give you some time to think about it. If you guessed uh, Borderlands, or anything similar to Borderlands, then you're correct. The point of looking at these loops is identifying how small changes can have a heavy impact on gameplay. Something as simple as replacing the clicking of a creature with shooting a creature, but keeping the rest of the game intact such as quests, loot, and leveling keeps the original gameplay formula but offers something refreshing, offers what many consider a new experience. Let's look at how we can use this ourselves in our own game development and why it might be a good idea to try and develop our own loops and quickly prototype them in hopes of creating something original from a game or game genre that inspires us. Before we do this, I'm going to develop my own call loop so you can see an example from myself. Let's begin by taking this super hot loop, which is you spawn in the world in first person view and notice that when you're idle, time is slow. When you move, time is normal and when you get a weapon, you can kill enemies and then win the level. Here is the idea and loop that I decided to come up with. You play as a person who has psychic abilities. You can control units on the battlefield and when you spawn, you see from first person perspective, but no enemies or friends can see you. Part one of the loop is that when you're idle, time is slow. With your abilities, you can look around the battlefield and get more information on where enemies or resources are. Part two of the loop is that when you move, time speeds up. If you move while in psychic mode, or if you move after possessing a friendly unit, time works as normal. You can then move around using the information you gathered while in psychic mode and take out enemies, or you could just position the units around a corner or in a key location where enemies are coming and the unit will kill the enemy. There are many options available aside from this, but this was the core thing I thought of. With part three of the loop, um, this is where the enemy dies. And when all enemies die, we reach part four where you have won that level. This idea was developed over a few minutes by thinking of ways I could switch up the super hot gameplay loop. My hope is that others will be able to take this concept of switching up call loops and quickly prototyping ideas. The approach taught in many schools currently is to write a game design document and then prototype the game. My problem with this is that I believe writing the document is a complete waste of time until you have tested the gameplay until you know people enjoy it. A better approach, in my opinion, is to prototype first and design document second. Better yet, is to prototype first and macro design document second. And if you'd like to learn more about macro design documents, I'm going to leave a talk by Mark Cerny in the description. I believe this method of using call loops to identify what gameplay you want can be super useful, and is the approach I'm going to be trying from now on. Keep in mind, everyone works differently. Just because this may work for me, it doesn't mean it will work for you. 
but if it does, I'm really happy. Here is my pipeline of development using this core method in about six steps. First of all, step one, identify a game that I would enjoy making and I'm potentially good at making. Step two is to identify the core loop of the game. Step three is to then make my own core loop of the game. Step four is to develop a prototype. Step five is to test the prototype. And step six is if the prototype is successful and I want to work on a macro design document, go into production. Else, if the prototype is not successful, go back to step one. I hope this was of some use to you. If you have success with this or use a similar system, let me know. I'm always excited to learn new ways of developing video games. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.